Greetings, Rory here with another subdivision tutorial on how to use Mixed In Key, Tractor Pro, and Ableton Live to prepare your music for an Ableton Live DJ set. Ableton Live is a powerful tool for producers, but it also excels as an ultimate digital DJ platform. However, one of the biggest differences between Ableton Live and traditional DJ software is the amount of preparation needed to prepare your music for a DJ set. This is because when DJing with Ableton Live, it's important that your tracks are warped tightly, volume levels are balanced, and all the tracks are labeled and organized. Preparing your music ahead of time eliminates the tedious task of beat matching so you can focus on more of the creative techniques of DJing. Throughout this video we will explore harmonic mixing using mixed in key, prepare an auto gain list using Tractor Pro to detect volume differences between tracks, and then warp the tracks using Ableton's warp engine. Let's begin this process by first looking at a piece of software called mixed in key. Whether you are an aspiring or experienced DJ, Mixed In Key is an essential add-on to your DJ setup. Mixed In Key analyzes the harmonies and melodies of your music files, and then writes the musical key and BPM into your track's ID3 tags. During your DJ set, you can use this information to choose tracks that are harmonically compatible with each other. Harmonic mixing involves mixing tracks that are in the same musical key or keys that complement each other. This also eliminates key clashes and prevents musical train wrecks. If it mixes in key, it means that the tracks you are mixing share the same set of notes, which gives the effect that the two tracks are singing together. For example, if you play two tracks that are in the key of A minor, then both tracks would play only the white notes on a piano, because the key of A minor consists of only the white notes. These notes from both tracks will complement each other when overlapped and will play together in harmony. Let's begin by adding a group of tracks so that mixed in key can analyze them and write the key and BPM into the track's ID3 tags. For this demonstration, I will choose four tracks from subdivision artists Billy Jack and Spratic and then click Analyze. Next to the track name, you can see Mixed In Key has detected the key for each track. To help DJs learn harmonic mixing, Mixing Key provides a Camelot wheel with a visual representation of which keys are compatible with each other. Each key on the wheel is assigned a key code number from 1 to 12. Many professional DJs move around the Camelot wheel with every mix. For example, when a track is playing, select a compatible track with a key code next to your current track's key code. So if you are in 12B, you can either play 12A, 11B, or 1B next. Next, let's move over to Tractor Pro. You may be asking yourself, why Tractor Pro if we are using Ableton Live to DJ with? Well, as of Ableton 8, there is no auto gain feature as handy as Tractor's built-in auto gain feature. This makes it difficult to balance the levels with every mix when mixing with Ableton Live. Yes, there are probably plugins out there that can be used to auto gain tracks in Ableton, but for this demonstration, I'm going to show you a nice trick using Tractor Pro to extract auto gain information so you can apply it to your tracks within Ableton. Alternatively, you can use your mixer to balance volume levels. However, writing your gains takes away from more creative DJ techniques. Tractor Pro's auto gain feature will make sure that every track is the same volume when you load it into a deck. This is crucial for digital DJs since most tracks are mastered at different levels. Applying auto gain levels to your tracks prior eliminates the hassle of having to continually adjust your gains. Let's get started with this process. First, open up the tracks you just analyzed mixing key. Notice to the right that Tractor has not analyzed these tracks. We must first analyze them to detect the auto gain levels. Begin by dragging the tracks up to a playlist. Next, select all the tracks, right click, and choose Analyze from the menu. Tractor will now analyze the tracks and detect the gain values. Now that the tracks have been analyzed and the auto gain levels have been detected, let's print out the auto gain values in an HTML style list by first right clicking on the playlist and choosing Save as Web Page. A print list box should now open. Within this box, check the following columns and make sure that the Analyze column is checked and the remainder columns are unchecked. Next, rename the list if you wish and choose a destination to save it to. Click OK and your web browser will open with a list of information about your tracks. You can see the column on the left has track titles and the column on the right tells you how many decibels Tractor will adjust each track so that they are equal in volume. 
Now, let's open Ableton and drop the tracks into an audio track. After the tracks load, click on the first track to open Clip View. Looking at the sample display, you can see I have warp turned off. In Live's preferences, I prefer to turn off auto warp long samples because I do all the warping manually. This prevents Live from creating a million incorrect warp markers on the audio's waveform when dragging in longer audio files. Okay, back to adjusting auto gain levels. Within the sample display, there is a volume slider where we can enter the auto gain values from the printed auto gain list. The selected track is Primordial Avenue by Billy Jack. Looking at this list, the track's gain needs to be increased by plus 0.4. Click on the volume slider and type in 0.4 to adjust the gain. Easy enough. So now we'll go through and do the same for the remainder tracks. When finished, all the tracks should play at the same volume levels. Great, all the tracks should play at the same volume levels. Alright, the last step in this process is to begin warping our track. But first, let's talk about what warping is. When you load an audio file into Ableton Live, you have the option to warp or not warp the audio. When warping is turned off, Ableton will play the audio file in its natural state. When beat matching, this can cause some trouble because of timing issues. However, Ableton's warping functionality lets you easily time stretch tracks without changing the pitch. This is great for beat matching, mashups, and sampling. Ableton Live has a handful of algorithms to do this, each optimized for different types of sound. To demonstrate this further, let's begin warping the first track. Earlier, Mixed In Key provided us with a BPM of each track. The first thing I like to do is change the global tempo to the track's BPM. This is important to correctly warp the track. Make sure you change the global tempo to match the BPM of the track you are warping. Now that everything is set up, let's begin warping our first track. Begin by hitting play on the track and then zoom in using the magnifying glass just above the audio file. And then we'll find the first downbeat. To avoid clicks and pops, create a warp marker by double clicking the time ruler just above the waveform right where it crosses the amplitude line just before the beat. The closer to the beat, the tighter the timing will be. Next. Right click on that warp marker and select set 1.1.1 here. Then right click the warp marker again and select warp from here straight. This warping method will work since the track has a constant tempo throughout. When working with electronic music, Ableton generally gets the warping right at this point. Let's check it to be certain by first turning on the metronome to hear that the track is warped correctly throughout. Next, zoom in on different areas of the track to see if the down beats are lined up to the grid. I usually like to zoom in near the end of the track to check that the beats are still lined up. If not, just create a new warp marker like before and drag it to where the beat should be. To be certain the track is warped properly, I'll go through and zoom in on different areas of the track again to double check my work and then add warp markers where needed. This track looks good, but before moving on, don't forget to hit save in the sample display. This is important because it saves all the warping, gain adjustments, and clip information to the track's associated ALS file. I'll demonstrate this process again by quickly going through and warping the next track without stopping to explain what I'm doing this time.
quickly point out, I didn't have to change the global tempo this time for the track because it has the same BPM as the last. Also, earlier I forgot to select the warp mode for the first track, so I'll go back and choose Complex Pro from the warp modes menu and then click save again. Live offers six different warp modes, each designed for different kinds of sounds. Looking back over the sample display, let's select the warp mode for the track. I generally choose Complex Pro from the Warp Modes menu. For playing back full length songs, the Complex Pro and Repitch Warp Modes are the best options. Repitch Mode works in the same way as the Turntable's pitch control, by pitching tracks up or down as the playback speed is changed. If you want to change the tempo without affecting the pitch, then Complex Pro is the best option. Beats Mode is best used with strong rhythmic sounds like drums, while Tones Mode is recommended for monophonic sources like bass or vocals. Awesome, that's it for preparing our tracks for a DJ set. Now let's check our work further and mix two tracks, see if they are warped correctly and the auto gain adjustments are balanced. Sounds good. That concludes the video. I hope you were able to learn something from it. Now, go set up a badass custom DJ template and begin banging out some tunes. Thanks for watching. Cheers.